not. I mean, I had him so mad at me. He literally got in my face. I said, you put your, you know, I said, get your finger out of my face. You shut up and back off now. And don't you ever tell me to shut up in a public restaurant again. Because we met at a restaurant. And he was so insulting that I just sat there after the 10th time that he was the FBI. I just clapped yep. my hands and I said, good for you. Yay. I, I'm happy for you. He didn't know what to do with me. And he had a treasury agent sitting next to him. So you can't tell me these guys don't like what you're doing. But there was nothing wrong. He said, well, you're trying to steal. I said, show me the statute and code in which I'm trying to steal. I'm doing my job, which is to ask the correct questions of the bank to provide that they have the standing to foreclose. If they do not, then they're the ones, oh, by the way, are you a public servant? Are you working for the bank? What are they paying you? He was very irritated with me. And I was having kind of fun with him because I'm a smart aleck. And the treasury agent never said a word to me. And at one point, the... FBI goes, are you an attorney? I said, well, heck not. What, housewives are stupid these days? And he didn't know what to do, and then I turned and looked at the Treasury agent, and I winked at him. I tell you what, he wouldn't look at me the rest of the conversation. I thought he was about to lose it because he, he could see that I wasn't going to be intimidated and that everything that they said, the other the FBI guy said, I turned it back on him. And um, it's all about fear. And oh, yes, I, I was a smart aleck. I mean, I'm sure that they don't have too many people say, get your finger out of my face and don't you ever tell me to shut up again. You know? I mean, <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. <laughs> and and so people need help. You've got some great stuff. You're, yeah. you're absolutely fantastic with what you're doing. Fantastic. Well, thank and you. Your your material has helped a tremendous amount in 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 exactly gaining more competence in this area and standing your ground. And I really appreciate that. I share it with our assembly every Tuesday night we get together. And um, we have a good group out here in Montana, and it's growing. And they're actively seeing results of banks backing down. And we never did hear from those agents again. Mm. Which... uh, you know, you have to kind of wonder, if you're stuck in Butte, Montana, what kind of an agent are you in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> now do you see what I mean by <laughs> you well, got the butthole of America, literally. Well, thank you again. And look, please, please send that through, and, and, and we will, you know, honor and recognize the great stuff you're doing and, and share it with others. But thank you again. I'd be happy, I'll happy, be happy to send it to you. Um, do I have an email address for you, or... Uh, how should I'm I send it? Terry will shoot it off to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll get high. So be encouraged, right. guys. It, it, you can stop them, but I highly recommend you do it, like Frank said, before you get to a court situation or like on a non judicial state. If you've missed one payment, start it immediately. Yeah. And if right. you haven't missed a payment, start it. That's really the best time to start it. All right. Thank you very much, Dawn. And Thanks, you know, Terry. Back together, I'll get right. you uh, Frank's contact info. Okay. Have a good evening. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dawn. Good on you. Mm-hmm. All right. We have a question on the chat line. And um, let's see. For the point three on the executor letters, uh, could you tell me what wording I should use for point three in the executor letters where it says Latin, English, uh, motto, of state slash province. Yeah. Um, the, the, the reason that, that word, those words were used uh, is really because certainly in, in, in states, the law that they swear to uphold is the, um, is the bar law of the state. If you look at the bars, the bar societies are modeled on the state so effectively the laws of the state is the law of the bar so this is a way of saying that you are referring to the law of the bar that they're following rather than the laws of the nation which they don't follow Uh, so the formal words is really to go and look and see what the motto is of the particular state or province that you live in and uh, it may be in English it may not be in English it may be in Latin it may not be in Latin but I'm sure if you go, almost every state and province on the planet now has a website. So it's normally pretty straightforward to go and find it. Yes. All right. Thank you. That, that should help clear that one up. 
Um, back when we were discussing, discussing about the age of uh, the um, majority and adults, uh, the guest number uh, three also is asking about uh, in order to engage in matrimony, what is the age? I, I believe the age of matrimony uh, should not be younger than 18. That's a personal opinion. And and that is merely not because of awareness of, of, uh, of sex, but because it, it, it requires, a, I believe, a awareness of um, the world, yourself, who you are, what you want, where you're going, and that... Um, Love, like many things, is an evolving process. And whilst many have married, and it's a brilliant thing to marry, we'd say matrimony, uh, are in matrimony with their first love. As often happens in life, uh, love is, um, to start with, um, very obviously tied with emotion. And I think there needs to be a a level of maturity. I'm not encouraging saying that people should marry later because I think part of life is to recognize that we are structured a certain way, we're designed a certain way and that um, there is enormous stability and strength in matrimony and, 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 uh, and honor and living an, an honorable and virtuous life. But I don't believe that marriage in, in the system and the canon law, I don't think people realize this, but in the Roman cult canon law, it states from memory that a man can marry at 16 and a woman at 14. So don't hold me to that, but I do seem to recall that in their canons of matrimony that the age is as young as 14, which I find abhorrent. Now, I may be wrong and it may be 16. I know 16 is a uh, for consensual relations is a minimum age for most Western countries, but I think the Roman cult listed as early as 14. I believe personally that it should be the age of 18. That's my personal opinion. All right, thank you for that, Frank. Um, Question here on the chat again. Uh, Frank, I am a, I'm in, must be in, a civil marriage, I am, no, I am a civil marriage celebrant priestess. Does one heaven have their own system for me to legally marry people under Acadia, under the Acadia system? That's an excellent question and uh, it has the framework but it is, it is not complete and in fact Terry you would recall that we had a similar question um, that you asked or your family asked some time ago to avoid the Roman cult system of um, marriage, yeah? Yeah. In how to Mm-hmm. Yeah, how to celebrate without necessarily um, uh, emulating um, the, the the ritual of marriage rather than matrimony. The the outstanding elements is to finish the sacraments and then fill it, finish the register and form to allow that to be uh, properly recognised. And then, of course, the issue is making sure that uh, their system recognizes uh, at least an equitable standing so that there isn't any risk of a relationship being disregarded by their system. So we're very close to doing it. The form can't come until the sacraments are finished and the sacraments will then form the basis of a um, liturgical procedure, which is going to be pretty, pretty simple. I mean, matrimony shouldn't, I don't believe, involve some, um, you know, overly formalistic um, process, but there is certainly a series of steps. And if you think about it, one of the first steps that it should occur in, in matrimony is the uh, engagement component. And then from engagement comes then the wedding, uh, and then the wedding then comes the consummation or the celebration of, of, of the, uh, you know, going off and and having your um, wedding celebration together. So beyond that and beyond the the key words, beyond the key forms and the sacrament, 
um, there won't be too much more formality, but it's just going to be finished and it's not finished yet, almost. Very good. Thank you, Frank. Yes, we've, there's been many uh, different directions that you've had to go, and uh, yeah, we did speak about that a while back, so uh, I know everyone will be excited to, to see how that comes out. Now, uh, there is another question here regarding name change here. Uh, my last name was changed by statutory declaration, so would that need to be incorporated into my EDP by attaching it to my birth certificate? I'm not sure if... Okay, well, there's, there's, there's two parts to that. The birth certificate is a totally different issue, mm -hmm. but um, a, a ecclesiastical deed... Okay, my name was changed by statutory declaration, so would that need to be incorporated into my EDP? If your name is different in their, when you when you write to their system, the reason you write under the name is so that they can uh, find the name on their record. If your name's different, then you have to recognise that uh, your documents need to reflect that. So yeah, if your name is changed, then your communication to them will be different. Um, so the short answer is yes. Okay, very good. Um, there's a question here regarding um, unreasonable, I'm not sure uh, that might even be unlawful, uh, search um, of enforcement officers of various agencies. This is a question from the chat as well. Did an unreasonable search and seizure of our firearm, uh, firearms, should we ask for a probable cause hearing? Um, an unreasonable search and seizure is something that um, I believe can be can be argued and can be brought against. But the problem the problem I say and this is a this is a, an overall picture. Saving your home as a matter of necessity, as we spoke about before, is 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 something that you must uh, if you to save your home you, you must step up and, and deal with honourably and, and, and stand your ground. When someone has, or some group has been involved in an unlawful uh, uh, enforcement and an invasion of, of home, the question is, are you moving forward and effectively putting fuel on the fire or poking the bear with a stick? Now, we're not saying that we're fearful of them but it is recognising that in their system, they know they have guns, they're trained to use them, they think it's funny when people complain, they think it's a joke, and that sometimes we've got to know when to move forward and when to let things go. So it really depends on the nature of the issue. If it was a matter that then led to other things occurring, then you've got to know when to cut it off at the pass. But if, if the action has moved on, I, I, I really believe it's like people saying, well, I picked a fight with council rates, which I know it sounds a bit different to people invading your home, but you've got to think to yourself, what am I going to get out of poking a bear in the eye? Is it going to cause them to come after me? And I have seen at the moment, sadly, too many examples where people have said it's a matter of principle so I'm going to draw the line in the sand and all that's happened is more injustice has occurred. Now, collectively, everything we're doing is showing that people are waking up all over the place and recognising how to stand their ground, be competent, be respectful and know what the law is. But I, I, I just would urge whoever's put that question in is to think about what are the potential consequences. If, if they are brazen enough to do a break and enter, an invasion on you for no grounds, then there's nothing stopping them going back and doing it again. And uh, we are dealing with corruption. So just think very carefully, what is the outcome you want to do? And if it, if it, if it is necessary, you feel, then absolutely um, look at what you bring forward in the court. But... Um, I've just seen too many sad results of people trying to stand up for their rights 
and find that the system jumps on them with two two legs, two arms, and and Kevlar. That's all.